this week on Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. Hi and welcome to Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. On today's show we're going to take you on a couple hunts from this past season and then we're going to head back to 2011 for a blast from the past. So stay tuned for some great hunts coming your way. On this first hunt, we're going to be joining a good friend of ours and friend of Team UOA, Kurt Barnes. Now, Kurt is no stranger to killing big deer, and this year he's got a beautiful eight-pointer in full velvet that he's after, and he comes up with a pretty cool way to get it done. Well, I'm after the, the big 4x4 we found the other night. Uh, he didn't come out when I packed in by myself and hid in the corn, but I have a cameraman now, and I have a uh, ghost blind to hide behind. Uh, he came walking past the camera in the daylight the one night I wasn't sitting there so we're gonna sit there uh, got a almost a mile walk mosquitoes are already out and it's nice and warm so we're gonna get going and we'll update you from the cornfield yes that's got to be a good luck sign I think tonight's the night Half the stub already. That needs a lot of money too. Hard shot. 
<laughs> wow. Were you playing on your phone? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the earliest I've ever shot a deer. We heard him run hard, but I think it was the sound of air pushing out of the hole. Hopefully. He should be laying there. He should be laying right out there. Uh, let's take about two minutes so I can quit shaking. And then we'll go look for him. I still have the shakes, but I can't wait. It's stubble out here, and uh, I have to go look. It's only, we just gotta creep through the corner a little ways. Oh, he looks big. <laughs> oh, yeah. The big ghost four. Another velvet. Having a good start to the year here. Look at that thing. That's pretty cool. You can almost see where I shot him from here. All right, 19 archery in North Dakota, whitetail anyway, is in the books. Now we'll be joining Keith Kenoki and his son Trey as Trey tries to put his tag around his first ever archery buck. We just got back to the truck. We walked out. We called Kurt and Jason, and they're mm -hmm. coming with the general right now. Mm -hmm. and they're gonna come out and help us look for it. We we looked back at the video, and it looked like the shot was a little back, but I, I'm pretty sure I heard him fall. So what do you think, buddy? Um, I think it was a good first buck, and um, that uh, I shot a little behind, but it was a pretty good shot, yeah. and. Um, I was just so excited that I could barely even pull the bow back. All right, well, they'll be here shortly, and uh, we'll go out and see if we can't find your buck, buddy. Okay. All right, cool. Let's go. So, remember the whole trip today? I, I even showed you that buck on the phone. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is the perfect buck. We'll find it one way or another, whether it's tonight or tomorrow. That arrow stayed on quite a ways. Did you see it fall out? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So it might still be in him even I'm yet? Sure, I'm pretty sure it's still in him. So we get up on top of the hill and look for the red light? Pretty much. The beacon of success. First thing, find blood. Mm -hmm. 
And if there's not much, I think we go home. He's got blood back there, but he's been walking around off of him. <laughs> right, walk up. Jason, Trey, dude. Only this way. Well, right here. Where is yep. the cattails? Yep. He's got some plug on. Uh. Now, Mr. Trey had himself a heck of a year. He not only killed this beautiful velvet buck, but later on in the season, he was able to put his tag on a beautiful North Dakota doe. So congratulations, buddy, on a great season. So now we are heading back to the year 2011 when we were a little bit younger, but it was one of my favorite hunts. We headed out to the block management land of Montana, and it was pretty much a blind hunt. And when I say a blind hunt, we weren't sure what we were getting ourselves into. We had scouted online on the maps a little bit, but we headed out and had ourselves a great hunt. What have I always said? It is better to be lucky than good. <laughs> that is freaking unbelievable. That was out of nowhere. We uh, were just deciding to which direction to go. 
we come up over a hill we've been talking that every there's just got to be some deer in here and we just we've only seen two does and one little buck we came over a hill this was extremely lucky i told john i said we got to get lucky he come over and he peaked he, i don't think he's 75 yards from us he had his head down laying there and as tough as this has been i wasn't going to take any chances i was just going to pull the trigger i saw i didn't know if he was dead or alive but i did see him move so <laughs> I knew he was, he was, I, knew I, think he was yeah, I think it's exhausted from the rut and I said better to be lucky than good we were walking and I mean 75 yards he's got his head laid flat to the ground and, and down down and yeah down. I mean he I couldn't believe it. I told these guys I said he's either dead or he's sleeping and he was sleeping uh, he didn't I'm not far at all that was a chip shot that was my <laughs> closest shot in a long time actually a really good buck. We are out in uh, eastern Montana and uh, we kind of just come out here last minute. We had a uh, Thanksgiving weekend left. Talked to a gentleman, Tyler, I have to give him a big thanks for pointing us in the right direction. We are hunting public land out here and uh, we went to one of the units yesterday Saw a few deer, and uh, we didn't really like the terrain. It was very full of pines, thick, not real good for filming. So we looked over the north unit today and came up here, and you know it's, it's still mid morning. It's got to be maybe 10 o'clock, but come over the rise. John caught him in his bed, head down. As they say, the rest is history. Good buck though, very nice. Very pleased with that. Well, the next morning we headed back out to the same area and made the same loop with a couple variations. And we were able to spot this beautiful three-pointer through the Nikon spotting scope. Once we got him located, the game was on. Bottom of the ninth. Two strikes. Boom! <laughs> I got him. Uh, same time you guys oh looked at my me. Gosh. I got to see. You know, the reason this was one of my favorite hunts, it had nothing to do with the size of the animals because they were average, but it was just three friends getting out and putting on a lot of miles on public land, having a great time. And the reward at the end of the day after hauling these animals out for four miles was a, a, a cold beverage and a Cloverdale sandwich. And that doesn't get much better in our books. <laughs> well, we sure hope you enjoyed today's show and want to thank you for watching. So take care, have a great week, and we'll see you next weekend. Taxidermy services provided by Dakota Taxidermy, capturing the spirit.